An official U.S. Senate hearing was held over the week in the small community of Gardner. U.S. Senator Steve Daines wanted to gather official testimony from local residents about their struggles as tourism growth in Yellowstone National Park skyrockets. And Tan's John Shearer reports. Just across this football field from the historic Stone Gateway to Yellowstone National Park, Senator Steve Daines gathered a small group of representatives from communities that nestle right up against the entrances to Yellowstone National Park. That would be in West Yellowstone, here in Gardner, and in Cook City a little bit to the east. Each community has its own unique problems and its own unique need for assistance. Including housing shortages, escalating real estate prices, transition of housing from family residence to vacation rentals, and the changing hiring practices of the area's major employers. Gardner is landlocked by federal land and real estate prices are skyrocketing. This is pricing out families and has left the school with fewer than 200 students for the first time in decades. In West Yellowstone, the community wants a seat at the table in wildfire management, and it would like to see the park gates left open year-round. For our community, would be able to better develop a more sustainable year-round year economy with such a change. In Cook City, the issue is wastewater because there is no treatment plant, just septic fields. In 2009, we had 4,000 visitors to our community center. In 2017, we had 23,000. That's a big strain on a septic system, and Cook City needs help dealing with it. New Park Superintendent Cam Scholey, in just his second day on the job, says he wants to listen and learn. I can't think of a better way to start a job, quite frankly, than to be here and have these types of conversations right off the bat and to listen to people's perspectives. For Senator Daines, identifying the problems is just half the battle. To address these issues, he needs to find the money. We, we crack that nut on the maintenance backlog. We looked at some of the, you know, the, the offshore uh, energy revenues there, um, developments being done on, on, uh, on federal lands and tapping into that to fund our, our maintenance backlog. I think that could be an area we could look at. So the really big issue here isn't so much the need, but how to deliver that need, how to pay for it in a time of tight budgets and growing needs. In Gardner, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Senator Steve Daines says he hopes to pass funding for the backlog of unfinished infrastructure projects in national parks before the end of the next legislative session in Washington.